Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly schedule dynamic updates to ensure you always have the latest content packages downloaded to your firewalls. I will show you how to do all of this using VMware Series Next Generation Firewalls using VMware Workstation. Hopefully you will enjoy the video. If you do, please like, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. So once you have your firewall license, the next step is to make sure you have connectivity to the Palo Alto Network's content delivery network, which will allow the firewall to periodically check for content updates. If you don't have a schedule configured, no new signature, vulnerabilities, malicious domains, or global tech files will be loaded into the firewall. Okay, so you can see I'm already logged into the firewall. Let's check some basic settings. First of all, let's review the PanOS version that I'm running in my lab. As you can see, I've upgraded from 8.1 to PanOS 9.16, which is the preferred VM series release at the time of recording. If you're not sure how to upgrade your firewall, please check out my PanOS upgrade lab video. The link's in the description and I'll put a card up above. Right, we need to check the services tab. And in order to do that, we need to go to device, setup and services, and then click on the little cog. You can see we have uh, the update server already defined. DNS and NTP is configured. Okay, so let's take this a little further. Let's confirm we have connectivity to the update server by SSH into the firewall, or if you prefer, you can use the virtual console within VMware Workstation. I'm gonna use PuTTY. So let's connect to the firewall's management interface and log in. And once logged in, I'm going to issue the ping host updates.paloaltonetworks.com. And then everything is working. We should have connectivity out to the internet via the management interface and get a response back from the server, which we do. So that's all working. So we can control C out that and then exit out of the console. Okay, so the next step is to click on dynamic updates. And uh, let's take a look at the, the layout. So we've got five sections that includes antivirus, applications and threats, global tech client as VPN, global tech data file and wildfire. So each section has a column with sp specific information like the content version, the file name, the release date, if it's been previously downloaded or downloaded now. And in the actions column, you can download install and revert and then the release notes links open a new page um, and gives you the opportunity to review the new release information down here there's a check now button this will contact the palo alto networks update server to check to see if there are any new contents available so let's click that now So now that it's downloaded, we can see that there's some new content available. So looking at wildfire at 13.56 today, so 12th of the 3rd, 2021, we've got um, new content that can be downloaded and installed. So we could download this, um, we could um, sync it to the HA peer, um, and then once it's downloaded, then we'll, we'll have the option to install. And that's the same for anything in here. Um, so periodically, um, you can you can manually click the check now um, or alternatively we set up the schedules um, and that's what we're going to do next okay so before moving on to the dynamic update schedules I want to recommend visiting the customer support portal website and subscribing to the content update emails so that you can get an understanding of how updates may impact your existing policies so just log into the support portal, edit your preferences, choose which notification you want to receive, and it's done. And you'll get periodic updates in your emails with all new content that's going to be released by Palo Alto. 
Okay, so let's go through configuring the schedules based on Palo Alto's network's best practices. Let's make sure time schedules are varied around the hour to avoid downloading and installing conflicts between the update types. Let's start with antivirus. These updates include new and updated antivirus signatures, including signatures discovered by Wildfire. Don't forget, you must have a threat prevention subscription to get these updates. And new antivirus signatures are published daily. So we will configure a new schedule um, to download and install every day at 1 a.m. So daily time 0100, download, install, and sync to peer, and then click OK. Okay, so moving on to application and threats, which include new and updated application and threat signatures. Again, this update is only available if you have a threat prevention subscription. New application and threat updates are published weekly, so I'm going to configure the schedule to download and uninstall every Wednesday at 5 past 1 in the morning. This means that the latest content update always includes the application and threat signatures released in the previous versions. You can make your own decisions on how often you want to check for content updates. This is how often I would set it in a production environment. So click on the none again, and we're going to do reoccurrence weekly. And then I'm going to choose Wednesday and then five past one in the morning. Action set to download and install. So you'll notice in the application threat schedule some extra options. I'm going to set the threshold value to 12 hours, um, which suits a mission critical network approach. This determines the amount of time the firewall waits before installing the latest content. So in a security first network, a schedule of six hours would be fine. So moving on to the allow extra time to review new apps ID feature, I should point out that new and updated threat signatures are released and bundled together as one package which in previous PanOS releases, it meant we had to install threat and newly modified applications at the same time, meaning you had two choices, either delaying content update installations until you assess its impact to the application, which is the mission critical approach, or take the security first approach, where you would install application threat updates as they're made available, you prioritize the latest threat protection, uh, protection over a possible impact to application availability. That being said, in PanOS 9.1, we now have the option to use the allow extra time to review new app IDs feature, which allows us to install content updates that include new app IDs on a separate schedule for those that don't. If a business uses a mission critical approach, it gives the organization extra time to review how new app IDs impact security policy enforcement and make any necessary policy updates. I'm not gonna set anything in, in here. Uh, I'm happy with that. Just uh, if you've got a, a HA peer and you're, you're running active passive or active actives, then you can sync that over. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna click okay. So let's move on to wildfire next, as these are signature-based content updates. So let's go into the schedule, and um, the because we're running PanOS 9.1, the best best schedule we could use in 9.1 would be check every minute, and then download and install, and then synchronize with the HA peer, and then click OK. Um, However, I'm going to point out that there's a new feature in PanOS version 10 where wildfire can be configured for real-time protection, which means malware and antivirus signatures created as a result of the analysis performed by Wildfire Public Cloud can be accessed as soon as they're generated. But please remember that without the wildfire subscription, you must wait 24 to 48 hours for the wildfire signatures to roll into the application and threats update. Okay, so now we're moving on to Global Protect. So the first one is Global Protect Clientless VPN. Um, these updates contain updated application signatures to enable clientless VPN access to common web applications from the Global Protect portal. You must have a Global Protect subscription to receive these updates. 
In addition, you must create a schedule for these updates before Global Tech Clientless VPN will function. So let's create a schedule to check every hour at 15 minutes past the hour. So click on the on none and then we're gonna go hourly and then we're gonna do 15 minutes past the hour and set the action to download and install and then click OK. Moving on to the last schedule, which is for the Global Protect data file. So these updates contain vendor specific information for defining and evaluating host information profile, um, AKA HIP, um, which is the data returned back from the Global Protect app. You must have a Global Protect gateway subscription in order to receive these updates. So for this last schedule, let's check for updates every hour and 30 minutes past um, the hour and set to download and install. So we're gonna click on this one and we're gonna do hourly and we're gonna do 30 minutes past the hour and then the action is going to be download and install and then we can click OK. So once you're happy with your schedules, um, don't forget to hit the commit button and push your changes to the firewall. Okay, so that's the end of the lab. Nice and simple. I hope you like the video and you find it useful. Please leave any comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.